All right, chicken police, paint it red. We are chicken policing right now. Two chicken detectives. It was a cold night in the city. They called me Cox, because I was a chicken. That's right. I was on the prowl for a nice little hen, see? New game. Previously on Chicken Police. She stood in the darkness, the light painted stripes on her body. She was the first womanly thing in my place for a long time. I love this. Believe me, Mr. Featherland, it's not an accident I came to you. Look, miss, I work for the police and I'm currently on leave. I couldn't accept private commissions even if I wanted to. My mistress's partner is Hobart Wessler, or as most people know him, Ibn Wessler, the kingpin. Exactly. Feathery gods, help me. Before I visit the club, I have to take a detour. I've got a feeling that this case isn't going to be a one-man job. And there's only one bird in this city I can trust. My ex-partner, Marty. He's going to be at the station. I can only hope he'll be willing to talk to me. I love this. I knew where to find Marty. At the station, we'd always draw straws about holiday duty. Marty never joined in. He always took the New Year's Eve shift, even though he had someone to go home to. I understood. Ten years ago, we survived the night the press called the Bloody New Year. Forgotten by Clawville, but not by us. We both left parts of ourselves behind that night. <laughs> yeah, I can just talk. I love it. Okay, so I can't talk to this guy, but I can't talk to this guy. Phyllis and Roy's. Two hedgehogs with an arrogance typical of novice cops. They're as prickly as they look. Officious little shitheads, but harmless. Well, look at that. Hey, Sonny. What you scratching out over here? I, I like how they the stick through the, through you out. <laughs> the ponchos. <laughs> That's a really fun detail. Tough luck, boys. I may not be on duty, but I'm still a cop, just like you. Well, more than you. Hey, you don't have to be so picky, old bud. By the way, you're in luck. Blood boils not in tonight. The lawyer's in charge. Oh, God. That clumsy buffalo is here tonight. If he doesn't end up in a cell again, he's lucky. <laughs> you got it. You looking for Marty, eh? I see you're still the brains around here, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm looking for Marty. Birds of a feather flock together. I see you're still the funny guy around here. You'll find the giant feather duster at the shooting range. As always. Hey, Royce. I'm telling you this because maybe you'll be able to understand. If this prickly shithead makes another racist remark, I'll strangle him with his own raincoat. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Hey, whose side are you on, you jerk? Every time this poster disappears, good old Blood Boil puts it right back immediately. I tore it down at least three times already. Actually, it's a kind of passive aggressive game for us with the Chief. The crown, the king, the pooches. And I guess that's a cat. Or a rabbit with its ears under the hat. Back in the day, I used to patrol the city streets in one of these. I don't miss it, but it used to have its advantages. Anything else to look at? Uh-oh. Did you miss me? No. Same here. Same here, sweetheart. Anything else? All right. Here we are again, Clawville Police Department. I've never been good at history, 
But if I'm not mistaken, this place has been a church, a hospital, and even some insane cult's secret hideout over the years. Anyway, the place holds the secrets of the ages and some drunk pigs in the basement. Oh, I hope Monica's like, Oh, hey there. How you doing, mister? Monica Rosen. Receptionist in theory, but in reality, she's doing literally everything around here. Like the beating heart of the PD. She's too good for this place, even for this city. Fingers crossed. Hey, Monica. Hey, Boss Bird. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be celebrating somewhere? I'm not attracted to a bird. 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 Every day is a holiday since I got out of here. I can tell. But what are you doing here? Are you here for a file? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah, you could look after a few things for me, but first, I'd like to talk to Mr. Big Beak McChicken himself. Those two prickly assholes told me he's emptying the magazines in the hole. Like always. And if he carries on like that, he's gonna use up all our ammo. So it would be nice if you drag him out of there. You know how this day is for him. <laughs> for him? You know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I know. Okay. So just sign here and you're good to go. Thank you, darling. Don't mention it, boss bird. Mm -hmm. So I have new files. The victim. A lady is the target of some strange threats. All of them are written. The mysterious messenger, Miss Deborah... Ibanez's employer is a certain Miss Natasha Katzenko. The employer, uh, Natasha's current significant other, is the infamous gangster Ibn Wessler. And I need to go to the Czar Club. Natasha must know my wife Molly from somewhere. Or perhaps she has very good informants. I must find out what the connection is. All right, so we don't know who Natasha is yet, but it's a cat. <laughs> right, 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 a cat. Anything else to cl Uh-oh, vending machine. Marty drinks this shit. I've never tried it, but I'm pretty sure it's gross and probably toxic. The shooting range is where he's at. That's the office area. Okay, what is this? What up, Bosco? Detective Chow Hound Bosco. He thinks he's a real alpha, but nah, he's just a lap dog. Mort Mardigan, a notorious deadbeat. Poor guy's been blind since his teenage years, but that doesn't stop him from running into trouble. What the cluck did he do this time? Guy's ducking crazy. Holy wild ones. Look what the cat dragged in. Hello to you too, Bosco. I see you're busy as always. Eh, I've been sniffing around one of the rundown joints. You know how it goes. And boom, this son of a lizard comes flying out the window. I didn't know the lizards could fly. <laughs> so, Mort was being a bad, bad boy again. Nothing unusual. And you? Still dying? Can I just say something? I was perfectly fine with everything going on in this game. The heads of animals on the bodies of humans did not bother me at all. Everything was cool until I noticed the dog hair hands leading to human hands. And now I'm like, mm, mm, no, I don't like that. No, sir. Don't like that at all. <laughs> Now I can't unsee it. Now I'm like, hold on. So underneath this, he's all fur. Is that what I'm getting? <laughs> I 
So you're telling me is underneath this is like human hands, but underneath is like chicken feathers? Is that is that what's happening? I'm still a cop for another it's scary. 21 days, Bosco. It's as unpleasant to me as it is to you. All right, all right. No need to bite. I wasn't trying to mess with you. You have Moses and Plato for that. And of course, blood boil. Let's hope I won't run into any of them tonight. Looking for Marty, eh? Ever since you left, he's kind of lost. He's trying to hide it, but he's not the same bird. Well, I don't think we'll have a teary reunion thinking about how we parted. Let me give you some advice, Sonny. Let him rage. He'll be the same after that. Anyway, he was the one that shot you, right? You should be mad, not him. It's not that simple, Bosco, but we'll see how he reacts. Thanks anyway. No worries, pal. Can I talk to this lizard man? Mort, you scabious beast. What the hell did you do? It's Morty to you, sonny boy. Everything's fine. There was just a bit of trouble in the bar, and someone got knocked on the head with a glass. It wasn't my fault. I'm as blind as a bat, am I right? <laughs> I unabashedly love voice acting because every other voice in all games is like, oh, hey, hi, I'm a character. But for some reason in this game, even the, uh, the hummingbird lady was like, hey there, how's it going? I'm sexy. This dude, any lizard or snake in any game at all is like, what's going on, dudes? It's me, Snake Man. This guy could have been like, hey, bro, what's up? It's me. I'm a snake. But they didn't do it. It's always the same voice. It's the go-to. If you look like a snake or lizard, you get a, you get like a, what's going on? Every time. Did that ever bother you, Morty? It doesn't need to be there, it just is. Listen, sonny boy, go tell them to leave me alone, eh? It's New Year's Eve, after all, and I didn't even do anything wrong. Not that wrong. Where's your little lapdog to get you out of this mess? Is that little pimp of a midget still sniffing around you? Little pimp of a midget? Hey, Jesse is a good boy, Sonny. What'd you say? And he's good to me, believe me. Jeffy? I, I hope that you said Jeffy. Oh, God, spare me the details. When will you finally realize that little shit's been using you? Oh, of course he's using me. <laughs> what could a pretty boy like him want from this old monster? Still, Sonny, I have no one else. Do you understand that? Don't you? Even you deserve better, pal. By the way, you look horrible, even for yourself. Are you feeling okay? Well, I'm not what I used to be. But neither are you, judging from your voice. But I'm seeing a doctor, sonny boy. I really am. Are you? Don't need to, Mort. I'm fine. Anyway, if Bubo prescribed you something, don't even think about taking it. I don't talk to that insane owl. Damn right. Please, say something on my behalf, okay? I really don't have time for this detective buffalo shit. Part of me wants the owl to be like, Who is here to see me? But another part of me realizes his voice is going to be like, Well, welcome. I am the doctor. And I welcome you to my doctor lab. My doctor lab. Yep. This is why I don't write scripts. <laughs> hey, careful with that. Buffalo Malloy is the chief today. <laughs> like I care. I'll try to speak for you, but keep it down till then, okay? You don't need this shit, and I don't need it either. Yeah. Sonny boy, you've always been a good friend. <laughs> More like a clucking pigeon. <laughs> 
You know what? I'm never gonna get tired of the use of clucking. Honor, strength, unity. <laughs> For the love of the wild gods, I'm gonna be sick. All it takes is one look, and my comb starts to tingle, which never means anything good. One of Blood Boil's favorites. The man's name was Mainly Officer Barkman. He's a dog, of course. Do you think the Barkmans have been part of this country for a long time? Did they come over here on like whatever the version of the Mayflower was? The Barkmans, they're a long, there's a long line of Barkmans. Officer Jardine. They say she's clever, smart, and dangerous. We need more of her kind in here. <laughs> the Kibby Famine brought them over. I'm really not in the mood to meet Deputy Malloy or any of my ex-colleagues from the Predatory Division. This is gonna be a hard ride. Last time we saw each other, he had a smoking gun in his hand and I was bleeding. I don't know how we can get past that, but it's worth a try. What does this say? Long thighs and a big gun. That's Marty's idea of a perfect woman. <laughs> Can't blame him for Can't it. Can't blame him. <laughs> what is it? Hey, you. If you let the ammunition boxes, if you leave the open, no, it's if you let the ammunition boxes open again, I'll kick you in the clucking ass, Marty. Okay. Yo, I got a shooting mini game in this? Get murdered! Oh, I have to reload! I gotta reload! I figured out what reload was. I probably should've... Son of a bitch! Ah! Well, didn't mean to do that. That elephant looked threatening though. Admittedly, he looked threatening. Also, achievement unlocked. Uh, he has 10,000. Try again. All right, now that I know what to do. Oh, that's the guy I shot. And you know what? He's fine. That was a shoulder shot. Sometimes it lets me shoot, and sometimes it's like, nah, dude. Rude as shit. She was protecting that guy. She was protecting him. Look at him. She's like, don't hit my man. Lady, your man's a criminal. No, he's got a heart of go- Look at that guy. He's like, you can't shoot him, sir. Oh, come now. Ah, oh, goddamn you! Chicken woman! Ugh. Oh, goddamn chicken women! Chicken women! Chicken 
chicken women. It's always the chicken. Oh, I, I, you know what? I even killed one chicken woman. I still got first place. Let's go. All right. Marty looks good. Big and loud and angry as always. Hey, Marty. Oh, well, look who's here. Hello, boss bird. Were you lost? This is the PD building, you know? Got this shit, Marty. We're better than this. Well, at least you are. Better than anyone, huh? Marty, come on, let's forget that. What's past is past. Yeah, easy for you to say, Sonny. Damn it, Marty, you shot me, remember? I almost bled to death. Hell yeah, I remember. Unfortunately, my aim wasn't good enough. I need your help, to okay? Help. That's what you want to hear. Well, it's a start. Okay, I've said it. I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, right. So, are you in? Just for tonight. Small case. We'll wrap it up in no time. Uh, what kind of case? A personal one. How personal? Very. The kind of case where if you come with me right now, you're not on duty anymore. Ooh, damn, Sonny. Stop it right there. I'm in. Okay. That's... that's it? Uh, do you know how boring life is here without your stupid reckless shit? Soon enough, I'll shoot all the ammo in here out of boredom. Right, so tell me, what's it about? I'll tell you in the car. Ooh, can I bring Bertha? Ah, for the love of... Marty, this is a routine case. You can't bring your shotgun, okay? Bertha stays. But what if? Okay, okay. But at least Susie can come, right? Ah, all right. Susie can come. That's what I want to hear. Can I talk to him again? Hey, Marty, what about Laura? How come she didn't eat you yet? <laughs> yeah, very funny. We're good, by the way. Mostly. As good as we can be after all these years. Glad to hear it. She asks a lot about you. Really? Yeah. She always hated you for getting me into trouble all the time. Understandable. But she also felt sorry for you. Oh, well, thanks. That's uh, much better. <laughs> if I'm honest with you, she loved the chicken police, Marty, better than this one. Well, I think I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Whatever, Sonny. Still drink coffee? Yeah, my only poison. Except for guns, of course. And women. We could visit our old haunt. What do you think? Oh, a nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. I'm in. Oh, and maybe we'll get into a little fight too, huh? A nice cup of Zip's coffee in the hop dog. If it comes to that, I'm leaving you without a blink. It's a hell of a line. Oh yeah, like last time? Those were uh, different times, Marty. With a different Sonny. Uh, well, all right. To the city, then. You don't have to come with me, you know. Okay, okay, I know. Let's go. Uh, Sonny, there's a little problem. Not so little. And it smells, too. What the furry hell is Blood Boil doing here? Uh, well, it seems we can't avoid speaking to him. Oh, yes, we can. You have your rifle with you, right? W what <laughs> Just kidding. Sort of. What is his voice going to be? I'm just so excited. The chief doesn't seem to be in a good mood, but he never is, actually. What a surprise. The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. I thought he'd sound a little more jowly. Chief Bloodboil. Damn. What was that, Santino? Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? 
Hey, 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 careful with the racist barking, old hound. Oh, whoa, it's getting hot in here. Can we just skip this part? It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper, and you know that very well, detective. I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. Oh, just a coffee, boss, I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve, and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. How touching. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight! Have a lovely evening, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. Now he can say fuck because he's a dog, but as a chicken, I'm only allowed to say cluck. Those are the rules. Those are the chicken can't rules. can't avoid speaking with the chief first. And it would be nice to say goodbye to Monica, too. I see you're swamped, buddy. I've sent the old lizard away. I don't need him to foul the air anymore. I hate his kind anyway. What, because he's a reptile? No, because he's a good-for-nothing piece of shit. No, oh, yeah, that's true. And you, are you letting off some steam? Something like that. We'll go and check out some seedy joint. We're cops after all, ain't we? And this is still Clawville. That's true, pal. Protect and serve. Yeesh, get a room, you two. Ah, shut up, Marty. Yeah, shut up, Marty. Hey, girl, how you doing? We're leaving, sweetheart. Sweetheart. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. Hey, don't make me change my mind. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Yep, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful out there. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves, mostly. Okay, but take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. Yes, ma'am. Back out. Look at these two simpletons. <laughs> they don't even realize their jackets are full of holes. For the wild God's sake, don't dare tell them. I already tried, but nothing happened. Figures. Now, why does this have a time thing on it? I want to, I want to go here. Yee, my condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. I didn't dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. What's that smell? Yeah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no, this is lavender? Ah, that. Right. Now that's gotta be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Ah, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Ah, eh, true. Except for Monica. Monica is a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? 
Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We got to find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. After you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay, I'll just stand around and stare out the window. <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. Books I'm never gonna read. Maybe nobody ever has. <laughs> has anybody ever read a book? That's the real. That's a question, I guess. Hello, hello, Chicago. Can I? No answer. Story of my life. Have you started on your great novel yet? I've already started working on my will, but I realize I'd have to leave everything to you, so cluck that. Huh. Pity. I've always wanted a chicken coop smelling like old socks and bourbon. You'll have to earn it first, Marty. Really? There's nothing in here? There probably was something in here at, the, at a different point in the game that maybe wasn't the demo. Interesting. So this is them. Yeah, the wild gentlemen. They were role models when I was a kid. Well, you must have been a weird kid. Which ain't surprising. My idols were the White Wolf and Super Squirrel. The White Wolf, eh? <laughs> Explains a lot. You know, when I was back in Averia, Clawville and the whole let's live together in peace bullshit seemed like an unattainable dream. Those guys made it happen. The city rose from the ashes of the Great Fire. Yeah, but look at it now. And what would have become of you if you hadn't ended up in Clawville? Maybe you'd even be happy? Perhaps. The old days. You know, I miss him sometimes. What, the hype? Us as celebrity cops? <laughs> nah, the work, the buzz, the phone ringing at 4 a.m. and knowing if you pick it up, you'll be dragged into something terrible, because that's your job. And of course, you pick it up every cluck in time. I'm not sure it's healthy to enjoy that. Hey, no healthy animal becomes a cop in Clawville. Yeah. True. Yo, is this his lady? Was she, was I married to a parent? Ah, man, I can't imagine how you feel. The only good thing you ever had, huh? Shut up, Marty. Shut up, Marty. <laughs> sure. Hmm, I didn't know you used to be a kindergarten teacher. But leather? It's history. So back off. I'm touched by the trust you have in me, boss bird. There are things better left undisturbed, okay? Yeah, got it. Who's that shaggy creature? That's M.B. Davis, you bird brain. Politician? Am I gonna have to smash your beak? Seriously, I don't know who the hell he is. <sighs> What? What is, is he a beaver? Miles Beaver Davis? What is this? What is, what is that? Who is that? I wanted to travel the world when I was a kid, but I think I'm gonna end up dead in here whether I like it or not. Mm, it would be best to board it up. It'd go well with this rundown neighborhood. It may be run down, but somehow I still feel like it's honest. Sure. You can live in Cockroach Town. That's an honest place, too. Has a similar stink. Believe me, Marty, I thought about it. Uh, why am I not surprised?
the cobbler district known as the hive or roach town i don't see anything about the uh, wild gentleman sunny clawville I suppose two shots was enough for today. At least until we learn what this Natasha woman really wants. Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main street toward downtown. <laughs> The city's heart beat differently. Ancient buildings were defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The Tsar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. We hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Ah, so this is the famous Czar Club. More like infamous, Marty. It's not for our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, boss bird. Very funny, Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club, and Marty, Please, don't monkey this up. <gasps> Excuse me? On behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville? Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, boss bird. Huh, you know, seeing this, I can't wait for the show. Oh, Marty. Oh, Marty. The girls. New Year's Eve's once a year, right? And we're not on duty. Have I asked how Laura's doing? Whoa, hey, I, <laughs> I was just kidding, okay? My relationship with Laura is unwavering, like the rhino beauty on this picture. Interesting taste you've got. Feathers, scales, or dermal armor, a lady's a lady, my friend. Thank the wild gods for self-sacrificing gentlemen like you. That is, I mean, that's just, that is a rhino. That is a dove. What I assume is an otter, a rhino, and a leopard. A cheetah, maybe. Lewis and Stork Lady. Stork Lady? Honestly? I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror, they're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. Don't be so radical, Marty. They're women. They live by different rules. <laughs> mm, that was kind of deep. <laughs> it's not. Just bullshit. There's more where that came from. They live by different Ooh, teach rules. Teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, that was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. Amazing. Maybe it was, Marty. <laughs> Wait, so can I eventually talk to this guy? Hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Yes, it's him. To be honest, Sonny, I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Nobody's perfectly sane in Clawville, Marty. But if not for this old rabbit, I wouldn't be here today. I'll never forget that. 
Should I thank him for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Can I actually talk to him? Ooh, hey, Lewis! Sonny, my dear friend. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. Pleasure's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways, so, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. Well, that's a shame. See you inside? I have s something to do, my f f f f f pal, but I'll try to make it for the main event. Okay, then. Catch you later, pal. Do you remember when the Clawville Chronicle was a really high-quality newspaper? You mean when they wrote something about us daily? Yeah. What exactly happened to them? Well, they got bored with us, Marty. And to be honest, so did I. But still, here we are working together again. Funny, huh? Yeah, hilarious. Huh, I like this. Why is that? I don't know. Because it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> I identify with Marty more and more as time goes on. Oh, look at that. Isn't that the new... It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Haven't seen such beauty since I left Averia. Of all that's furry, whose is it? Maybe it's Ibn Wessler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. Oh, yeah, you know this bounce is gonna be like. Tough. Jeez, look at that guy. Unless he has a voice that's like, hey there, gang, welcome. I look tough, but I talk like this. What are you gonna do about it? That's not a guy. That's a demon, straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Yeah, I bet his name's Bill. Nah, he's definitely a Bob. Five bucks for Bill? Okay, I'm in. Howdy, pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful chilly night? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Now stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah, I've... Uh, uh... God, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I'm really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. Yeah, right. Oh, thanks. My pleasure, gentlemen. Do we have another way in? One day, neon signs will cover the whole world, I'm telling you. You read that in some kind of science fiction book? No, it's just what I think. Oh, so you have your own thoughts now. The world's really moving forward. Pluck off, Sonny. Hmm. Can I ask about Lewis? Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course, Mr. Hayworth is an impeccable gentleman. And also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. Is he going to actually tell us about the rest of these? I don't want to show my police badge. That's going to throw him off. And if I say, tell me about Natasha, if I exit and I talk to Lewis again. Look, Lewis, that bouncer over there. Well, yes. He is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. Oh! 
I see. <clears throat> oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me. I'll t t t talk to him. Much obliged, pal. Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? Damn it, Marty. What? Did I say something wrong? Sir, how'd you do? Everything's fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of p p pigeons are my friends. They're on the list, okay? Not to Lamont, sir. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, g g gentlemen. Thanks, old pal. It was my p p pleasure to help you, as always. The jazz overwhelmed us. <laughs> there was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like years of cigarette smoke and the smell of spilt whiskey. Behind the bar, Rows of fancy bottles reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A dangerous place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Tsar. <laughs> Here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does it mean you're buying, honey? Don't even think about it. Ugh, oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. No, Marty, not like always. This time it's for real. Such classy characters. Whoa, this guy's just staring at me. <laughs> Look at the mane on this bartender. Holy shit. All right, we got to start with fancy whiskey. Mm. Look, uh, Sonny, I know it's not my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his you know, problems uh, had gone too far. You're treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just didn't. <laughs> Look, fellas at the station are talking, you know? All kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Look, uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good, and let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Sure, Marty. Also, I 100% just stole that bottle. Hey, bartender. A man's best friend. Uh, that's not a dog, Sonny. That's a horse. He just has a very weird mane. I didn't mean him, Marty. I meant the bar. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah, because that totally makes sense. Two whiskeys, kid. And no horsing around. You can't just say these things. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, Longface, give me a glass of tap water, too, okay? Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. Can I talk to him again? Ooh, ooh. Tell me, hey, Breath, have you seen you the You can't just say me? these things! Not yet, sir, but she's coming on soon. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... I don't want to. What about... let's see... five dollars, maybe? But, sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Yeah, yeah, stop riding on the details, Big Nose. You do your job, and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. If I was this horse, I'd be like, piss off. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. I'm sorry. If I was this horse, I'd be like, okay, piss off. Of course. 
gentlemen. I'm sorry, I meant piss off. Hey, there's Filmar. Who? Oh, yes, Filmar. Because that's what he calls himself, right? You know him well? We had some seriously wild cases together, yes. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Well, well, if it isn't the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. <laughs> okay. Mr. Dumbass alias Phil Marlowe. So says someone who tried to go undercover with the Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey. Right, Mr. Turk Cayman? Hey, that was a long time ago. I was young. And I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clapped tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. You want a case? Five feet tall, half of that legs, angelic voice, demonic eyes, just the usual. Oh boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well, good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out, in which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other, I'll deny you in a blink. Good to see you too, old pal. Okay. We'll be back. Uh-oh! Shit's going down. Oh! Or not? Wait, did people just leave? Oh! Oh, the boss is here! Okay. Well, hold on, what's this lady got? She has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? So, where the hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Oh, man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. You just need to get used to it again. What if... Uh... I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> so says the little... But jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now. All because of you. You should feel honored. But jam. Uh, you know, Sonny, sometimes you're like an evil little child. A fox is a wolf who sends flowers. What? Oh, nothing. I read it somewhere. Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. Ha ha ha, very funny. The big sheep? The picture they were ba for? You think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detective's left stranded? Yep, just like life. Mm -hmm. 
The loudest howl? <sighs> Another lupus movie. Jeez, is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, gods, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. Watch your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me. Just women and guns are my only weakness. <laughs> no shit. Murder my tweet. Ooh, I've seen this. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case, and... Hey, uh, Marty? What, yeah? I don't give a shit. Veronica Kate? Oh, I know this fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? Exactly 12 years ago. <laughs> oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. I see. What did you watch? I don't remember. I just remember her. And nothing else. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. That's it. I can't see the last one. Okay. Uh, the dame? This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. Isn't that... Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler, in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Ah, uh, great. That woman with Ibn, I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. Hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me, Marty McChicken. Marty McChicken? Oh, God. What a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's... Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is... Uh, he is... Uh... Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. Hello, boys. So, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um... <clears throat> We, we were, um, just in the neighborhood, and... Cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. Oh, I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood-red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, indeed. It's, a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter, but to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so he's rather tired. If you would excuse us. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? I need you to know the Hamtaro reference went over my head. Just now it hit me and I was like, stop, stop. 
We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Wow, they will not speak to us, huh? It's just him. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. But I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? All right, Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's just provocation. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city. Only a bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, detective. But the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? The name is just their name, of course. But the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Fiddleland. You're a pragmatic rat. Thank you. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wessler's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Oh, just uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. Hmm. Look, detective. If you want to know something, just the... All right, Mr. Wessler. Wessler is a tricky guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall. Yet. Okay. My detective meter. He's tricky. He's a tricky guy. Uh, all right, we just hit him with... How did you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. Good point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I'm sorry to hear that. Why didn't you just call the police? Huh? Why? What would have been the use of that? A few messages aren't enough for a case. You should know that. Harassment makes for a case. So do threats. Who were you trying to convince, Sonny? Huh? They would have laughed in my face. Anyway, you know, the police station. Once I set foot in there, eh, I'm not coming out again. Your lawyers are too good for that, Evan. Yeah. I guess you're right, chicken. Minus 15. Minus... Is it like... I don't want to hit here? Why would anyone have reason to blackmail your girlfriend? I don't know. Uh, maybe because she's my girlfriend? You think that's enough? It's plenty enough. Good point. Oh, are you finally getting to a point? Or do you really want to dig around in my private life? Because, uh, people who do that end up in the alley, if you catch my drift. Very much so, Mr. Wessler. Wessler is tougher than I thought, and he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Uh, 
Were there any similar incidents in Natasha's past? I mean, threats, blackmail, enemies, or insane fans. Psychopath pianists, perhaps. Oh, I don't know about enemies, but she's a celebrity. A star shining bright in Clawville's night sky. Do you understand? She gets endless fan mail. It could be anybody. Eh, I wouldn't overreact. Natasha doesn't feel that way. I've noticed. I don't know. I want to ask questions, but I feel like because of the meter, I need to be in the positives, right? Mm. Is everything all right between you and Natasha? Yeah, you don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> Understandable, I guess. Naturally, our relationship is stable and perfect. I'm the setting, she's the gemstone. Yeah, if you know what I mean. I rarely hear such poetry, but uh, I understand exactly what you mean, Mr. Wessler. So, you have your answer. No recent friction? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? It would make my job easier. Yeah, it would only lead you astray. So be glad that I tell you no. No friction. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Okay. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Ah, I hit the meter. Okay, great. Mm. The mob boss and the pussycat, eh? How did you even meet? Huh? Are you trying to piss me off, Corpora, so I accidentally let some big secret slip out? Huh? A simple answer would work. Yeah. <sighs> you know, Natasha, she's both connoisseur and muse. Ah. Uh, so, uh, how was it? Uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember? That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the Millions back then. <laughs> she was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged opportunities for her on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with the promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. Now I guess she was willing. The next day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Eh, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. But she has her own kind of a weekend house. Hmm. How often does she use the weekend house? Yeah, every other weekend, roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. Mm. Yeah, is she alone? That's gonna get him. Is she completely alone when she's there? That's at the gonna get him. As I've told you, Natasha's a free woman, eh? She's an adult. She doesn't need an escort. Or, uh,. She didn't need one until now. Are you afraid for her? You know, a big star like her, alone in that house? I never said a black car doesn't drive by two or three times a day, but, uh, it's just caution. Huh. I'm not a monster after all, am I? I suppose not. No, I lost ten? So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. 
Yeah, I know what you're getting at. But I'm 100% sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Hmm, illegal gambling night. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy by the roulette wheel. Always putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although, yeah, always on the red. Yeah, right. So, can we meet your lady? Mm, I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She Whoop! What is that? 60% accuracy? I'm pretty- I'm a decent cop! I'm a decent cop! Thank you for your time. We'll be seeing you. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should, uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh. Please, take a seat. Oh, Marty. The show's gonna start soon. He fell in love instantly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, he fe he's charmed. He's smitten. Sonny. Say, Claw will still lie in my bed. And it's dead. That was, um, unique. <laughs> oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. Uh, forgive me, my name is Santino Featherland. <laughs> I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less? Sometimes less is more, Mr. Featherland. <clears throat> You were amazing, dear, as always. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? But of course. Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you, I don't want a scene. My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey. I understand. You know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. Oh, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go. Be oh, oh. I knew she was. I went too fast. I go. I go too fast. Her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me, like light attracts the moth people. I wanted to be the microphone. <laughs> the moth people? Like light attracts the moth people. She rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. 
I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching, barely covering her marble skin. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. Next time. Oh, uh, okay, that's the end of the race. demo. Okay. I get offended if women don't drink in my company. Oh, you are a funny guy. Locking hell. Welcome to the sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Marty, that's enough. Then two cocks suddenly learn to fly and even swim by God. One more word. I'll bite off your arm. Please tell me there's gonna be a glorious shootout. Keep it straight, Sonny. Shut up and shoot, you big feather pillow. Of all that's furry and plumy, that's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> let's stop it right there. Yes! Yes, chicken police! Yes! Oh my god, yes! That is a win! There you go. It's on everything. Amazing. Bye, chicken police. Now, is it actually, is this an, an out? It's out out? Is it out out? It is, in fact, out. It is, in fact, out. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. Note to self. Oh, that's fun. Okay. That made me laugh. That was good stuff.